night and welcome to the Galen Hour. We're in season four of the Galen Hour. We're talking digital marketing. It's always a pleasure to be here with you on Wednesday nights. The Galen Hour is a production of Galen University. It focuses on academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. We have with us tonight Perry Budden from BTB. He is a digital marketing strategist at BTB. Welcome, Perry. Thank you for having me. We also have with us um, Minor LaRue. Minor is a lecturer in digital marketing at Galen University and he's our co-host for this season of the Galen Hour. I'm Diana Gomez Perifit. It's always a pleasure to be here with you on Wednesday nights. Thank you for joining us and let's get into our show for the night. So we'd like to start our show by asking Perry a few questions, um, since he's our guest for the night. So um, Perry, as the digital marketing strategist at BTB, I mean, it's, I mean, I cannot not start this show without talking about that fantastic ad that we see in Times Square. Man, I'm sure every Belizean and more are proud of that ad. So we realize that BTB is utilizing the digital platform. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that campaign and maybe other things that you can readily talk about that has helped us in that digital arena? Yes, of course. So, yes, that, that, that specific ad placement in Times Square, you know, Times Square is one of the, the most sought after placement um, when it comes to New York. And New York is one of our, our major um, target markets as well in the U.S., right? So um, getting that ad there was really important to us and having that ad to be so cap you know it, it, it captures the essence of Belize really well and the grab life campaign really well now and um, just as to to speak more on uh, what we're doing here at the, at the Belize Tourism Board um, we're taking everything pretty much digital no and, and of course we're doing everything strategically and based on on research and statistics um, the for example, or we, we, we shifted our efforts and, and when it comes to like our travel trade mm -hmm. and the travel trade com component. Um, when it comes to travel trade, we're, we're seeing that people are connected online, right? So we, 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 we saw that, um, that we saw the opportunity for that and we've created a, a digital platform for our virtual trade show. So we've created wow. a virtual trade show that, um, and we actually did one um, <clears throat> last fiscal year and we're, we're going to do another one um, in the next coming month. Um, and this one is based mainly on, on family travel. So we're, we're bringing together the group of um, key travel um, providers in the U.S. Um, actually not only the U.S. but for the, the UK market, this South American market and also the Canadian market as well. So we're bringing everyone together and, and basically um, showcasing um, what Belize has to offer on um, what Belize has to offer um, and sell Belize on that international international platform, a digital um, international platform. So we're taking everything um, digitally, and of course, um, apart from our or programmatic spin, or um, influencer campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, digital marketing is, is our, at, at its core for all our marketing efforts at the Belize Tourism Board. Fantastic, and I'm sure it's opened up our audience. I mean, it's, it's kind of cross borders without us necessarily have to crossing borders, if that makes sense. And that's what the digital um, world has done for us in marketing. Exactly. But it's fantastic to see what's coming out of the BTB, and I, and I hope you all know that we are all proud of these um, campaigns that we're seeing, you know, so thank you for that. I think um, you're right, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been a lot of great things coming out of the BTB specifically in marketing Belize as a premier destination and I think we've all seen it, you know, we have more branded hotels in Belize who perhaps didn't think about setting up shop in Belize. Um, but in your experience, you, you mentioned something key, there's been, a, you know, perhaps a shift mm -hmm. in 
in focus from the more traditional marketing to the more digital marketing. And in my experience, it's always a challenge to get the older folks on board, mm -hmm. right? So you smile. <laughs> um, how, how was that approach for you guys? Because, you know, I believe it was in 2011 <laughs> when the BTB first actually stated a uh, digital department, so to speak. Uh, and you've been there for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my question is, how much more emphasis um, in initiatives, in support? Because, in, you know, it was a shift, I'm, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. between, you know, going from more traditional marketing to more digital. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how that has changed in the years you, you, you've been at the BT. Yes, it has changed drastically. Um, well, like, like you mentioned, uh, back in back in um, the early 2000s, um, when we did our, our overall rebranding and everything, we were, it was more focused on mainly print, mm -hmm. print media. Um, and then, you know, we, we, like what you mentioned, we, uh, the, with the 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 development of the digital marketing component for the, the Belize Tourism Board. Right. Yeah. Right? Um, like maybe right now you could tell us, you know, one of the issues <coughs> have been, you know, with, with print, so print heavy. So how does that come to evolve some of the initiatives? Like, you, you know, you had the, um, uh, the language booklets, they're now mm. digital. Mm. Uh, the travel guide, no, it's also digital. So, mm. you know, that has also shifted not only your initiative, but the focus. And, and your budget, because now you can do a lot more mm -hmm. with just boosting or, or running a campaign to have these digital brochures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, so maybe you could tell us about that. That's an example of how it's shifted, right? Yeah, and um, you know, over the years, um, um, like what you mentioned, no, um, the, 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 our market has shifted to a digital world. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you mentioned, and rightfully mentioned that everybody even the the the, the, the Gen Z, they're more online. They have they, they they're more in tune to what is going on on social media. Mm -hmm. um, it, and um, getting us to target the right audience was very important. So we had to, sh to shift to a digital world. And like what you mentioned, no, the uh, getting everything to when it comes to our print media. Uh, we had our, our travel guides, our brochures, our maps, or um, different pamphlets. Everything is now digital. Um, to to our, even our our um, our sorry, sorry. TV ads. Their television ads. Oh yeah, television. television ads. When it comes to te television ads, we're more on connected TV. Mm -hmm. um, people are more in tune to. Um, let's say, for example, um, platforms like Netflix. People are um, are subscribed to Peacock, Hulu. Mm -hmm. So we have our ads playing on those platforms and, and on connected TV through our different programmatic um, uh, efforts at the Belize Tourism Board. So changing from print, from that print world, was kind of twofold mm -hmm. because we just had to keep up with the times, um, keep up with our travelers, mm -hmm. and of course, keep up with our competitors as well. Perfect, those are really great examples, Perry. Um, and I hope you guys keep doing, uh, <coughs> finding those outlets because um, you're right, it does put, it, it puts Belize at perhaps at the same level playing field compared to other destinations that may have bigger budgets even, mm -hmm. exactly. where we can be leaner, more creative, and also still reach that target audience uh, of travelers who want to come to Belize. So, so thanks for sharing that. Exactly, and um, just to add, um, you mentioned uh, during the COVID period that mm -hmm. kind of sparked the digital era, you know, and everybody was pretty much on online. online. Um, what we did um, as a destination is to just keep on top of mind with our ads. We had two ads two campaigns, I should say, during that time period. We had um, our... Um, breed. Huh? Was it breed? Uh, yeah, kind of. Exhale. exhale. We had our Exhale campaign. Um, early phase. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we had our Exhale campaign in, um, when we were about to 
to open the airport mm -hmm. back in um, October no, mm -hmm. of last year. And it's basically just letting everyone know they just need to exhale and enjoy the great outdoors and Belize and marketing Belize as a destination that you that you can um, just come visit and visit um, safely, um, you know, with proper um, health and safety um, guidelines. Of course, we had our, our gold standard um, uh, program as well that, that went digitally as well and all, all our stakeholders pretty much adapted to that. Mm -hmm. And now we have our, our, our Grab Life campaign, um, which is very captivating, you know. So it's basically um, sending the message that no, we're open for business. We just need to grab life, get all your bucket list um, items um, checked off. You, um, and we pretty much have all the activities here in Belize that you can actually do, you know. Because um, through research, we we're noticing that high High, high impact activities. People were longing for that, right? People want to get back out, outside. So we created a campaign that <clears throat> that spoke to that audience. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. I think, um, and actually, the exhale campaign mm -hmm. is one of my favorites so far mm -hmm. that you've recently done. I have to, I have to admit, uh, mm -hmm. and and we'll play it. We'll play it for the viewers. But one of the things that I I do enjoy uh, a lot. You know, and, and going back to that initial question of traditional marketing mm -hmm. to more digital marketing, mm -hmm. you know, if we compare your, your, your Hulu or your YouTube or your video campaigns, mm -hmm. you know, that was something you couldn't do back, back mm -hmm. then in traditional marketing. You know, you'll have to probably buy a very expensive spot on, on, on one of those networks. Exactly. Um, which we couldn't afford, perhaps, mm -hmm. right? And if we did, it was very short. Uh, and I think now you can speak specific to that audience, and by that I mean, uh, and going back to the Exhale campaign, where you, there's one line that, that, that I loved, and I think it was right timing, right after we opened the airport, was dust off your passports, yep. right? <laughs> exactly. Because, uh, I mean, even here in Belize, right? I mean, I think in February of this year, just before summer or just before Easter, we started seeing those long lines at the immigration trying to get your passports mm -hmm. renewed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's very important. Uh, and the right timing, I think you could not do that before in more in a more traditional world, right? Exactly. Now you have QR, QR codes that you, know, you can mm -hmm. track. Um, so I think it, it's more, I, I like to say, the, the campaigns you guys are doing, which you guys are doing a great job, they're very hyper-focused. Right? Because we don't need to reach a million people. We just need to reach the right 100,000 right people. Exactly. exactly. So I think that's very important. Dana, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, B2B made us so proud. Just imagine working at the B2B during COVID when you've watched your um, industry just flatline. You know, and having to make sure that you were doing the right things to let people know that we're still here. We're waiting for you to exhale. Yeah. The campaigns are on point. So, I mean, and the digital platform allowed us to really and truly continue on a very positive and um, effective um, campaign. And so it, it really is wonderful to see what the digital world has done for us mm. and for marketing. And so, yes, so it's good to see that we've, the shift had already started, as you said, um, mm. Perry, and that now we're full blown into digital and hitting the Gen Zs, they live on their small devices, yeah. you know, and so being able to make sure all of that can reach us on whatever device yes. we walk around, handheld device, I mean, it's absolutely important. And so, yeah, but I do want to commend you, you know, because, and I mean, I can't get over the, this wonderful Times Square ad. Oh, yes, it, it was definitely a team effort. Mm -hmm. And of course, we work with an amazing team on our different agencies as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I just want to tap into um, one of the, the components in digital as well, where, where we're focusing on a lot. I spoke about connected TV, mm -hmm. um, that's longer form videos. Um, and um, we were working a lot more with, with YouTubers mm -hmm. uh, on the social media um, side as well. So we've worked with um, this amazing travel inspiration group called Passport Heavy. And um, we've been working with um, several other um, YouTubers um, in that same realm. Um, but I'm pretty sure you, you guys have seen that video already of, um, of passport. Belize, Passport Heavy, the yeah. Passport Heavy 
yeah, video. Yeah. It's their longest video. It's 48 minutes long. It's like a Netflix movie, mm -hmm. a documentary, mm -hmm. but it's really, really um, worthwhile. So, um, and we've received um, very, very good reviews from that and very, very good um, um, outcomes from, from the video, no? The videos, yeah, yeah no, that's statistically, no? Yeah, it's, it has performed well. Good views and actually over the industry too, I've heard really good comments, yeah. like, and I'll share some with you because you probably don't hear them all, but I think some of the comments I've gotten were, this has been one of the best videos on Belize. Yeah. Uh, for a long, long while, and I think, you know, just having that first-person perspective, um, and, and I think a lot of the, and, and we'll talk more about influencer marketing after uh, this, this, this break, but before we go, I just want to mention, it's really hard to experience something for the first time again, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think that's what influencer marketing does, Correct. right? Um, and, and you see things you probably missed. Mm -hmm. Or because we live, we take it for granted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's so many beautiful things Belize has to offer. Correct. Um, but I think we'll, we'll get into that after the break, right? Yeah. So, fantastic conversation. Um, but we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with the Galen Hour. Stay tuned. Become a member of the Gillen Eagle Alumni Association. Reconnect with your fellow classmates. Rediscover the Gillen Eagle spirit and reawaken your inner eagle. Come home, come celebrate. 20 years of excellence with Gillen University. For more information, contact 636-8881. Galen University offers a variety of quality academic programs. Visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or give us a call at 615-3129 or 614-6415 for more information. Apply today and come soar with our Galen Eagles. It's never too late to accomplish your dreams. Apply today. Come soar with the Gillen Eagles. To learn more about our various programs, contact us at 824-3226, 615-3129, or 614-6415. Visit our website at www.gillen.edu.bz or email us at admissions at galen.edu.bz. Galen University, promoting academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. We have with us tonight Perry Bowden, Digital Marketing Strategist at the BTB. Perry, we were talking quite a bit about campaigns that are currently running, the shift from more traditional to more digital marketing um, platforms. But I wanted to bring back this um, segment by asking you about how does BTB measure its success from a campaign? From a campaign perspective. Mm -hmm. So um, before we before we have any campaign, at the get-go, we try to, to, to understand the campaign, what we want to get out of the campaign, and um, in, in order to measure the KPIs, right? So the key performance in, in indicators. Um, so for example, um, on a, a video like what we had, I mentioned before, the Passport Heavy, heavy Video campaign, that was an influencer campaign, and um, so that was mainly based on on awareness. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we um, were measuring more, more or less like, um, the amount of views the, the, videos, the video has. Um, they then um, on, a, on, a, on a different, on a different um, standpoint, we're, 
let's say for example on the Expedia campaign that we're that we run or we, we, we will run again in, in the next fiscal year um, it's mainly based on bookings heads and bins conversions key conversions mm -hmm. other programmatic um, um, campaigns were mainly focused on click throughs mm -hmm. um, click through rates and, um, and of course at the end of the day our goal at the, the Belize Tourism Board through most of our um, digital marketing campaigns is to increase the overall um, arrivals in the country and have more heads and beds. So that's a very good metric and mm -hmm. I think the, the private sector perhaps is also pleased to know that that's your main, um, your main goal. But how do you plan the different campaigns? Is it more like from opportunity base, uh, you know, going back to that New York um, ad that, that, that it's currently running. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys plan, you know, what's your media plan looking like? Or is it like, uh, you know, there's a quick opportunity to jump on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or is it a mixture of both? Yes, right? it's, it's actually a mixture of both, you know. Um, like, w of course, we have our planned um, media plan for the entire year that is pretty much scheduled. But when it comes to like the quick, up, quick wins opportunities, like, um, um, what we're seeing for the um, the the, um, the the Times Square that was a opportunity that we had um, on a whim. We we jumped on it, and that was the overall outcome. And the, the, um, for the overall um, focus on mainly awareness for the awareness in that specific market, the New York market, which is a, a major market for us that we're we're trying to promote um, uh, here in B for Belize. You know, perfect. Can I just say something here? Because this really is very important for us and we have to have a marketing plan. And so it's important to plan, but opportunities arise that we might not have foreseen and we need to be ready, agile, flexible enough to take advantage of them. And we see that BTB can do that. But because we're talking to a nation of people who have entered the digital marketing world or have begin to realize the importance of marketing their business, I want to bring that point out very loud and clear because mm -hmm. we find that happens to us at Galen. We have our plan, but then things happen that are not necessarily in the plan, but can fit within some of the strategies and the goals of our plan. And we need to be that agile that we can take advantage of them. They should already be captured in our budget to some degree mm -hmm. because we, you know, we have just how we do our budget and we should be able to be flexible enough. And so that's, I want to bring that point out because our people need to know you don't have to stick so straight and be inflexible when you have marketing plans. If you want to really and truly be successful, particularly in this ever evolving and dynamic world that we now um, truly, really and truly live in a dynamic, ever changing, snap of the finger, exactly. <laughs> things are changing world. And quick win opportunities like that happens a lot in like when it comes to like influencers as well. So um, it's it, it, it all boils down to like the opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, of course, online on social media. Um, of course, there's like there are several different opportunities like um, that we would jump on as well. Um, you know, in the past we did um, Breaking Bad. Yes, yes. So yes, on social media we 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 we, we, we take the opportunity to, to jump on like very um, catchy or trendy opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, or the Steve Harvey one you guys did too? Yeah, and the, and the Steve, yeah, the Steve Harvey, um, exactly. And um, when we offered him to, to, to come to Belize now, and That's also so another sure. one for the Breaking Bad um, episode that, that spoke about Belize, mm -hmm. and we, we, we jumped on Twitter Belize, to, yeah. to take advantage of that. So those are just two um, examples of that. If I'm not mistaken, and maybe this is not BTB's work, but Queen of the South when it was ending, have you oh, all watched yeah. Queen of the South on Netflix? Yes, when they I were saw coming that. to Belize. Oh, that was so we do issue. see Belize being, our yeah. name is being called a lot more and more. We're seeing it a lot, actually. A lot yes. more in movies, but yeah. We're seeing it a lot more. And of course, we are organically. excited. Did you hear that? Yeah. They mentioned Belize are coming to Belize. Not that we necessarily want drug kingpins to come <laughs> <laughs> retire in our country, but we like the publicity of the fact that Belize yeah. is a desirable destination. And, and even on, our, on, on the programmatic side, we try to, <clears throat> to, to, to be uh, hyper focused on what the performance of our um, placements, you know, and, 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 and be flexible and, and adjust where, 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 it, it where, where it needs to be, you know, and mm -hmm. on the social side as well, on paid social. We do a lot of A B testing. So um, mm -hmm. like just being agile, like what you mentioned, is very important and, and not 
I always stick to that media plan. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. quick, and, quick wing opportunities, opportunities will always be there, so we try to take advantage of everything mm -hmm. um, at the Blaze Tourism Board for on the digital side, no? Absolutely. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And talk to us a little bit about your influencer program. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's also something very flexible, um, depending on what markets you want to promote, the lease, um, and, and, and what. I'll call them subcategories, you know, if it's diving, is it fishing, is it birding? Mm -hmm. uh, and don't, then do you guys have like a micro-influencer mm -hmm. uh, program, so to speak, that will, you know, cost you less but get you more reach within that community? Yeah, exactly. So, yes, we, we do um, plan our influencer campaigns in advance. We, 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 we know who we want to work with. Um, but we also want the, the, the influencer that wants to work with us as well. So um, we get a lot of outreach from influencers and we, we try to be very ex um, flexible with our influencer plans for all markets. Um, it's based on niche markets. Mm -hmm. So like what you mentioned, we might um, have like a fishing based um, influencer. Um, we will have an influencer based mainly for um, sustainability. Mm -hmm. in the, in a specific market like Canada, that are very fo hyper focused on on so um, sustainability, and um, maybe someone from the U.S. that are that, that you know it's their main following and their focus is maybe maybe um, high high impact activities like zip lining, cave tubing, splunking, um, um, rappelling, you know, um, and of course photography and. We want to work with both. Yes, 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 it's planned at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but we want to work with influencers that would have a keen interest in working with the destination mm -hmm. and a love for the destination as well, right? Because it's very important to have both brands aligned. We want them to have content and create content in Belize um, that we can be proud of. And of course, at the end of the day, we want the content that they produce to be um, in line in what okay. we're, so you we're have marketing to work as for well. Both your brand and, and their audience. And their audience, exactly. And you mentioned something important. Um, you know, while you have that influencer campaigns or programs, I've also seen in recent years a push for like a local ambassador. And I'm exactly. seeing a lot more businesses mm -hmm. kind of like you know, rubbing off on that idea, you know, I see, you know, a couple of local businesses now have, um, I think even travelers just released their um, local ambassadors yep. and, uh, mm -hmm. and a couple of other brands. Mm -hmm. um, how, how has that also, you know, played an important role and what's the focus mm -hmm. for that? Yeah, mm -hmm. extremely important actually. Mm -hmm. um, we have our Belize and Traveler campaign. Um, that was something um, before COVID, but it, we, we found the, import, um, the importance of the Belize and Traveler campaign even more important um, when we, um, during the COVID period um, and right after lockdown, um, where we wanted to spark local travel. So the importance of that Belize and Traveler campaign um, went through the roof. And to, to promote that campaign, we, we implemented a social uh, influ social influencer component to that. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing it with several um, marketing efforts as well. Um, we, we recently did it with um, in promoting our Civic, um, Pride, right? Civic Pride, Pride campaign, but not only that, but the, the, the International Music Festival. Mm -hmm. We, a component of that, um, we had a brand ambassadors, social media brand ambassadors for the event. Mm -hmm. um, that marketed the event and assisted us to market the event for our locals, um, for our local market. Mm -hmm. So yes, we've been really in tune to um, local creators mm -hmm. and having them, um, having them, and using them, utilizing them for campaigns mm -hmm. and, and projects. Also, and, and you know, to, to maybe add to that, we're not only seeing local businesses use local ambassadors, but I'm also seeing a lot more local influencers yeah. evolve mm -hmm. um, and actually uh, last <clears throat> week we, we had a conversation with somebody who said you know we're in that stage that we're becoming you know um, a, a local uh, one of the most sought out local influencers and I mm -hmm. said oh that's that's good you know when mm -hmm. when you start to see your local community 
doing that because when you look at other countries, like you know, we've had influencers from Mexico, mm -hmm. yeah. we had influencers from Latin America, um, and so that means Belize is really stepping up, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, and, and have you guys used um, you know other up and coming? local influencers, because I think that's an outlet and an industry that's starting to grow and it's becoming a little bit more sustainable, right? Of course, yes, definitely. We, we have a lot of talent here in Belize, um, and not just influencers. We, we've been working with a lot of content creators mm -hmm. here locally, you know, to, to build content um, about Belize to, to market the destination, not only to, to look for the local market, but to the international market as well. We've been working with them. so. It's twofold now, not only the, the local influencers, yeah. but content creators as well. Yeah. I like that we talked about that, and I was going to ask that, so I'm glad you did, Perry, because um, sometimes people think they're one and the same, or influencers and um, um, or ambassadors, mm -hmm. but definitely we're seeing both being utilized by businesses and by the BTB for sure. And how important are they to a campaign and to a marketing strategy? They're very important because um, <clears throat> um, our local influencers, um, like I mentioned, they're very talented in what they do, you know, and, and getting the, the message out, the, the proper message out that we want to, um, to, to, to put out there, you know, for a given campaign. Um, they're very creative, um, they're very professional, mm -hmm. um, and they're right on par to some of the international um, content creators and influencers, to be honest with you. We have, a, we, have, we have a good pool of influencers here in Belize. And I think one yeah. of the things that we're seeing, because the digital world is just, uh, it's such a big um, landscape, mm -hmm. is that some of our local ambassadors and local influencers are now uh, at an international level. You know, exactly. like, I mean, we, we know like Georgia, Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's Royal Pain was I mean, um, yeah. just amazed just on her organic reach yeah. mm -hmm. that she has. Um, and, you know, there's others that are following that footsteps. So I think it's, mm -hmm. it's not just locally. That, I mean, locally, I would say they're stepping stone mm -hmm. to, to jumping into that international market. So I think, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's really good that police are stepping up in that way, too. Exactly. And Georgia is a key example of that. Um, one of the first, I would say. Exactly. One of the, I would say the pioneer, one of the pioneers um, in, for a local um, influencer that went international, and she's right. doing big things. Right. Her picture was one of the first on that Times Time Square. Square. <laughs> she recently did, she recently yeah. did an um, interview with Alicia Keys, so yes, she's, yeah. she's, she's doing a lot. Sure. And I'm, we're very proud of that, you know. And at the, at the end of the day, she's promoting the Yeah, sure. definitely. And, and and the BTB as well, now that they're embracing a lot more of these local ambassadors slash influencers, because it also helps them to, to get started, which I think is the hardest thing, you know. Exactly. Um, to, to get going and, you know, snowball into that larger reach. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have, like, different... Um, programs that we have at the Belize Tourism Board, one of them being the, the Digital Marketing Summit, you know, providing the information to everyone, not only our, 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 our local stakeholders, but for Belize, it's for Belize. Once we're doing the right things digitally, we're building the digital footprint for the destination. Maybe I, maybe I can ask, I know with all the talk about digital marketing and how, how much have we progressed with our website? There was a time when if I wanted to know something about BTB, I would have to pick up the phone, call, call the office, hope that somebody would answer that <laughs> end. And, you know, and are we, have we moved beyond that where you can just go on the website, mm -hmm. there's the, you send your question and somebody responds to you on the other end or they're frequently asked questions. How, how has it, um, the digital marketing impacted or website. Yes, and that's another, another component of digital, <laughs> like what you rightfully mentioned. Though. And um, when it comes to the websites, we have two websites. We have a consumer facing website, which is travelbelize.org, and, um, and Belize Tourism Board, which is more catered for our local partners, okay. providing information to our local partners. And um, no, like what you mentioned, <laughs> you don't really have the call in anymore. Mm -hmm. um, everything is pretty much re readily available for local partners. Um, all our forms, applications, everything is there digitally. Mm -hmm. You can download it, fill it out, um, 
right there on a whim and send it and email it to the, 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 the correct person. Um, pretty much all the information is, is right there online. Um, when it comes to our consumer facing website, we, we just um, uh, re redesigned our website, our travelblazer.org website mm -hmm. last year actually. Um, and m now it's, it's a spanking new website um, marketing the, the destination. Yep. So we really have endless tools <laughs> that we can utilize in this new digital era. Um, yes, websites have been around for a while, but what we can do now with our websites, what we can do now with social media, um, yeah. you know, so it really, really has pushed us into the future. Yeah, and yeah. what you mentioned, no, it's, it's, it's something that w you can <laughs> easily jump on travelbelize.org and chat to one of our, um, our, our agents right there. So we have okay. someone that, that provides information um, on a, on a whim, so they could just go there. Yeah, if you don't, if you're not seeing something on the website, you could just chat with someone right there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, this conversation we could go on forever. There's just so much interesting stuff we can talk about, and it's never it never gets tiring or boring talking about the wonderful stuff that Belize does and how much we want the world to know about how fantastic we are and the great work that BTB is doing. But um, we do need to take a break, and so we'll take a quick break. And we'll be right back with the Galen Hour. Become a member of the Gillen Eagle Alumni Association. Reconnect with your fellow classmates. Rediscover the Gillen Eagle spirit and reawaken your inner eagle. Come home, come celebrate. 20 years of excellence with Gillen University. For more information, contact 636-8881. Galen University offers a variety of quality academic programs. Visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or give us a call at 615-3129 or 614-6415 for more information. Apply today and come soar with our Galen Eagles. It's never too late to accomplish your dreams. Apply today. Come soar with the Gillen Eagles. To learn more about our various programs, contact us at 824-3226, 615-3129, or 614-6415. Visit our website at www.gillen.edu.bz or email us at admissions at galen.edu.bz. Galen University, promoting academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. Final segment of the Galen Hour. Um, we have with us tonight Perry Bowden, who is the marketing strategy, the digital marketing strategist at BTB. Maya Leroux is with us again tonight. He's the co-host for this season of the Galen Hour. So I'd like we'd like to come back and I'd like to turn the. Host yeah, no, I think the conversation has been really great, and actually I had the opportunity to meet with um, Liz Paradise, who's from the agency. Um, Zimmerman, mm -hmm. right? And she's the creative director. And she had great tips. She, she mostly focused more on, the, on video marketing, which I think it's, it's, you know, really gets a lot of reach and engagement, specifically in this time and age where people are not reading as much as mm -hmm. we love them to, exactly. right? So let's, let's give it a view. Hey, Digital Marketeers. I hope you guys are doing fine. And we have another episode. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, video marketing and we actually have with us um, 
Liz Pardise from the Zimmerman um, Agency, um, who's going to be talking to us about that. So, Liz, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. I'm. I've been in the business for. Oh, 25 plus years uh, at the Zimmerman Agency. We've been working on the Belize Tourism account for about four years now. And um, I've had the opportunity to be in Belize at least half a dozen times and it gets better every time I come. So it's a passion project for me to figure out how to do the best marketing for Belize Tourism. Perfect, Liz. And so one of the objectives of this show is to really uh, hone in into what um, uh, you know, what Belizean digital marketeers can do, right? And Galen University is really trying to amplify that. So I know uh, you do a lot of video marketing. So tell us, how do you go about building a video strategy or a video marketing strategy? Right? Sure. I mean, video is where it's at, right? So we, we know through a lot of data and analytics that video performs better than just static posts or print or whatever. So it's, a, it's an opportunity. That's how I look at it. It's an opportunity. But the first thing you have to decide is what is the goal of the mm. video? Because there are many different kinds of goals, right? One could be, well, I want people to watch a video and then I want them to book, right? Or it could be, I'm just trying to spread awareness of my business. Or it could be, I'm trying to create en great engagement on a social platform, okay? So mm. first and foremost, what are you trying to do with your video? And based on that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the idea for my video, right? So I know what I want to get out of it. Now I need to put together the words and the pictures and the story that's going to help me achieve my goal. Okay. And then lastly is executing on that video, actually making it, right? And it, it takes a lot of planning and it takes a lot of passion and sometimes some late hours to to do all of that because the first two steps are on paper mm -hmm. right the first two steps are what is the goal the next one is what's my idea so this is on paper when you go to actually shoot that video this is where the magic happens or you fail right yeah. so to me those are the three critical steps the one thing i will add in addition to that is when you go back to that step one which is what is the goal I would also say, and where do you want this video to be seen? Is it on social media? Is it on my website? Is it in a digital banner? Is it on YouTube? Because that will also affect what you do. Uh, I'll give you an example, right? So the video that you might put on your website, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, you don't really have a time length set on that. It can Correct. be whatever you think it needs to be. And because it might be specific to either one section of your website or it might be the video that greets you on your website, you, you, you will base the message on that. Now, suppose instead your video, you decided that it's for TikTok. Hmm. A hundred percent different approach, right? Definitely. Because certain kinds of video works on TikTok and certain kind do not. It will totally, it should totally change the way you approach that idea for your video and the way you execute it. Okay, so you're saying depending on where the, the video will be hosted. Yes. Then you have to also have that in mind. That's you have to have that in mind and it's, and it's not only from the way uh, you ideate it or write it, and it's also in the way you shoot it, right? So let's just say you're using an iPhone, which mm -hmm. is fine, right? We have very advanced phones today that can take very good video. Mm -hmm. But it, depending on where it's going to run, is it horizontal or is it vertical? Correct. So what you don't want to do is shoot something horizontal that needs to end up vertical. Yikes. <laughs> so these are all just, it's just planning. It's, it's in, you, you talk about video strategy and that very much is part of it. Strategically planning for the platform it's going to run on, which not only affects the way you physically shoot it, but also the approach you take in your idea and how it will be effective on that platform. Perfect. That's a great tip. And if you could give folks in Belize that are just starting to, you know, 
uh, tinker about the idea of shooting their own videos with their phones, right? Yeah. Um, and I've seen this in a lot of places where small businesses, you know, they might not have a budget, they might not have the resources or the know-how. What would be one tip, apart from, you know, having a solid video marketing strategy to get them, you know, going? Go play. Okay. I agree. Go play. Perfect. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, thank you, Liz, for being with oh, us in this short you. segment. Uh, and I hope you enjoy Belize. All right. Always. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So those are some great tips by Liz. And I think, you know, some of the great takeaways is, you know, that last one really stand out for me, you know, because a lot of times you can have something in your mind and when you go and execute it, it doesn't come out the way you want it. And, you know, it, you know, it takes me back to a lot of the viral videos, you know, mm -hmm. they're never scripted. <laughs> uh, nobody came up with them. It just was kind of like Happens. for the moment, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I think those make really great videos for digital marketing. What do you think, Per? Yeah, I have to agree. You know, sometimes <laughs> the, the, the impromptu videos, it works. It works. But at, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you just need, you need to be a little bit more strategic in what you're doing when, when shooting a video. Shoot a purpose, uh, you know, right. what, what Liz mentioned there. Um, shoot a purpose, have a plan, um, you know your placement, and just um, stick to it, you know, throughout your, your entire um, production process. You know, know your placement and you know where you want to, um, your video to, um, to, 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 to be placed at the end of the day. Um, like what she mentioned, shooting vertically, shooting horizontally. All right. You know, short form videos, it's pretty much king lately. Um, even longer farm video platforms like YouTube mm -hmm. are adjusting to, to, to shorts, mm -hmm. short form videos. So that, and that's the engagement in short. Um, it's, right. it's through the roof, you know, TikTok. Yeah. You know, platforms like um, it, um, Instagram with Instagram mm -hmm. Reels now. So everybody's shooting vertically, even with photos now. So. <laughs> So, so just know your placement and then um, just stick to it. Yeah. Which, which of the platforms do you use at BTB? I mean, and we know Facebook is still the dominant social media platform for mm -hmm. Belizeans, but I know we're not only marketing to Belizeans. So how, who do you use? Which of those platforms? Yes, yeah, so we, we have pretty much all the social <laughs> platforms. We have Facebook, we have um, Instagram, we have TikTok, uh, we have Pinterest. Twitter, um, uh, yeah, that's, and of course YouTube. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn as well, yeah, yes. LinkedIn, LinkedIn as well for, yeah. for, for our local market, for the BTB as well. Yeah. Yep. Great. And do you have any one that you see more engagement on? Do you? Do you... Yes, we actually, we're actually very strategic in um, um, how we post and what we post on what platform, mm -hmm. um, knowing the different markets. So that's, that's, that's another good tip, is just studying your, 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 your platform and knowing who you're reaching mm -hmm. in that platform and what, and what demographic you're reaching on that platform. And you adjust accordingly um, when it comes to um, your overall content that you're producing and, um, and sharing on the different social platforms. So for example, Facebook mm -hmm. um, is a different audience from what we're sharing uh, or the type of content that we're sharing on Instagram and, and, and on TikTok, for example. You know, so um, TikTok is a lot more fun, fun. loose, mm -hmm. casual, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and now Reels, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's pretty much like TikTok now. Yeah. Um, but of <clears> course, <throat> shorter form. Um, we're, we're noticing that um, seven seconds for reels is like the, the, the sweet spot for, for a video. So, mm -hmm. and it's performing well for us. So, just little things that you don't have to do um, in just knowing your market, knowing your demographics, and knowing who you're targeting. Um, uh, and just stick to it. Wonderful. I mean, it's, it's a wide open world out there. Yes. It's just us strategizing and selecting the right platforms to reach our audience. I don't know if you have any other questions. No, I think just to um, reel back, you know, I think overall digital marketing can mm -hmm. be very overwhelming, right? I mean, you've mm -hmm. said a handful of, mm -hmm. you know, videos and web pages, um, and, and, it, and it can be very overwhelming if you don't have the right tools or the right budget or the mm -hmm. right resources or, or even the right team. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and in my experience, I've seen a lot of businesses in Belize, you know, kind of go through that digital transformation, mm -hmm. um, you know, from, from our 
medium to larger companies, but some are still kind of struggling, you know, mm -hmm. because, like I said, perhaps those that have seen more traditional marketing work for them yeah. uh, in, in the past years have not transitioned as quickly as those that saw the opportunity of jumping on digital marketing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, a, um, you know, one key uh, takeaway is, you know, uh, not because your old ways are working means they're going to keep working in the future. So exactly. I think, um, you know, for all those small businesses, um, you know, who perhaps can't afford more traditional media are now jumping on doing a lot more digital marketing and, and you know, experimenting on social media as well because mm -hmm. it's just more accessible to them. Yeah. But I think, you know, a lot of businesses do appreciate that. Yeah, indeed. Perrin, you get the have the last words. Are there any last words you want to leave with your viewing audience? Yeah. Yes, um, like what you, you mentioned, Minor, um, just take mm -hmm. advantage of digital at the end of the day. For the most part, most of it, it's free. Mm -hmm. For social media, it's free. We just need a little bit of creativity, a smartphone, like what Liz mentioned, and you go for it. Correct. Great. All right. So this brings us to the end of our show for tonight. I thank you so very much for being here with us, Perry. I know you're absolutely busy, but um, finding the time to be with us here tonight is uh, much me. appreciated. And, uh, and sharing with us what we're doing at the national level when it comes to digital marketing and marketing our country. It's always a pleasure to have you with us, Minor, and thank, thank you, you for co-hosting. So I'd like to thank our viewing audience for joining us for this episode of the Galen Hour. The Gillian Hour, as you know, is a production of Gillian University. It promotes academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. See you here same time, same place next week. Have a good night. Become a member of the Gillen Eagle Alumni Association. Reconnect with your fellow classmates. Rediscover the Gillen Eagle spirit and reawaken your inner eagle. Come home, come celebrate. 20 years of excellence with Gillen University. For more information, contact 636-8881. Galen University offers a variety of quality academic programs. Visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or give us a call at 615-3129 or 614-6415 for more information. Apply today and come soar with our Galen Eagles. It's never too late to accomplish your dreams. Apply today. Come soar with the Gillen Eagles. To learn more about our various programs, contact us at 824-3226, 615-3129, or 614-6415. Visit our website at www.gillen.edu.bz or email us at admissions at galen.edu.bz. Galen University, promoting academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning.